All right, this is how I started out my morning. So I am, I'm dressed except for, look at this, right? Go to the bathroom to, I usually get ready after I'm dressed. <laughs> I locked myself out of my bathroom. <sighs> like, I don't even know. Oh my God, I just wanna get ready for work. All right, I got it. <laughs> and it's still kind of locked. Like, that is so weird. I just have to, like, push in. Oh, yeah, it is locked. How did that become locked? Weird. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. It's Janet, and if you're new here, make sure you hit that red subscribe button. Give this video a like to let me know that you're liking my content, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so YouTube can notify you when I upload a new video. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. I love all of you so much, and I appreciate you so, so much, and welcome back to my channel. Good morning, everybody. I am working today, hence why I'm wearing a uniform. And I am not wearing any makeup today because I feel like my eyes, my allergies, I noticed in a couple of my last vlogs that I've done, and I'm so sorry that I do this. It's just kind of like one of those unconscious things that I do is I constantly like wipe my eyes because I have really, really bad allergies as a whole, let alone se seasonal allergies. My allergies bother me all year round, like it doesn't matter what season, but definitely when it's spring turning into summer, my eyes and my allergies get very, very bad and they water all the time. And I do take like a Benadryl, I take allergy medication, um, but it just doesn't seem to help sometimes, honestly. So you will see me, uh, I'm warning you now, and you've seen it already, is I wipe my eyes a lot and like they get itchy. So I just, I've been obviously touching them too, too much. So today I'm consciously not going to touch them because they get really red and irritated. And I find with me already having like asthma and allergies, I have really red eyelids and I always have, and I have very, very dark prominent circles under my eyes. And a lot of people with asthma and allergies do have that trait. And I have been using the eye cream that is supposed to like take dark circles away, but it's just not working. and. I'm just gonna wear no makeup today. I work in like, uh, I always call it a glorified convenience store. I actually live near a military base in Canada and on every Canadian military base there is a Canix. A Canix is mainly, there to help the military that is there either on posting or visiting or training. So here in CFB Suffield, we actually have the largest training base in Canada. There is a lot of people that come from the UK and they come here to train um, just according to our demographics and our temperatures and like it's kind of similar to the desert, especially in the summertime. So we do a lot of training on our military base. And I work at the Canix, which is like, like I said, a glorified convenience store. We have um, a grocery store, like it's, we sell groceries, we sell snacks, liquor store, appliances, and a post office through Canada Post. And that is where I work most of the time is in um, the post office. So that is where I'm going today. And since it is such like, I just live in a really small community. So a lot of the people that I see on a daily basis is people that I know. And this is how they're used to seeing me. They, they usually see me without makeup. Once in a while, I will put on makeup and I just put minimal makeup. I'm definitely not a guru by any means, but I feel like makeup kind of looks me look more put together. I just watched actually, that's why I mentioned it is because I just watched um, All Things With Kim. I'm sure everybody's watching her. She's one of my dear friends. I love her dearly. She is now pregnant, which I'm so thrilled about. I'm so happy for her. And um, she had mentioned in one of her vlogs that a subscriber had said that she looks tired. And 
She said that it was her eyelash extensions because she usually doesn't wear makeup, but she does have eyelash extensions. And when she doesn't have her eyelash, eyelash extensions on, then she, it, she feels like it does make her look tired. So that's kind of how I feel with makeup. I have even commented in her video that she mentioned that is um, that's why I wear makeup. I don't wear a lot of makeup, but I do it so I don't look dead because I feel like it just kind of covers up my eye area. Um, my skin, I feel like for my age, I'm 44, and I don't have any problems with my skin. I never actually have had any problems with my skin, and that's not really why I put makeup on. I put on makeup to kind of deal with my eyes. So I'm just giving my face a break today. I put some moisturizer on and um, I'm just hopefully that it's going to kind of clear up. Like I said, sometimes my eyes are always kind of like that, but I feel like they're more irritated right now. So that, you seen how my day started out actually by being locked out of the bathroom. So it's, and it wasn't necessarily like the bathroom itself being locked out of because we do have two other full bathrooms in our house, but that's where I have like my toothbrush and my hair stuff. And you know, not that I did a lot with my hair, but I have been using like an argon oil in my hair every day um, to help the growth, which I think it's been working phenomenal. My hair has been growing in thicker and has grown in length, but I do that every day, even if I'm wearing it up. Um, I try not to wash my hair every day as well because I do have natural curly hair and luckily my hair, um, like I don't get dry scalp or anything like that. So I try to, if I can, it's only usually the next day that I can wear it up and um, then I usually have to wash it the next day after that. But unfortunately, having curly hair most of the time, I know a lot of people that I follow sometimes, um, like on social media, they put a lot of product in their hair and their curly hair can last them like four days and I'm like what like how does that happen because I can even put a ton of product in my hair and it maybe will last me the next day if I wear it down like it looks fine but definitely once the third day comes around I can't it's too frizzy and like the whole thing with when it gets frizzy is you cannot I can't anyways if I put more product in my hair it just it just doesn't work right so I'm wearing my hair up today this is what you get today. You get all of my beauty today, all of my natural beauty, we shall say. Um, so I am going to be doing a what I eat in a day today. I will show you right now what I'm going to be packing for my lunch and also right now in the next clip, I'm going to be making my iced coffee and one of my sweet subscribers had mentioned that she would love to make my iced coffee how I'm making it and would love to see the measurements that I'm using. And of course, I do not measure, but today I am going to measure how much I put in my iced coffee so that everybody at home can make the same iced coffee as me. So let's get started. We are going to get started on our iced coffee. First, you need a cute cup. <laughs> and I have filled this about halfway full of ice is what I do. So we are gonna start by using that. Now, for my coffee, what I've been using for my cold coffee, I bought this container at the dollar store and it's been working perfectly. It doesn't leak or anything like that. So it's just like a juice jar maybe with a lid. And I keep the leftover coffee um, from the coffee machine. So Jimmy usually makes a, a half a pot every day and then he usually just has one cup in the morning. And then what I'll do is I'll take the rest of it and then I'll pour it in my cold, um, usually like later on that night, I'll put it in here and then I put it in the fridge for overnight. So then the next day I have cold coffee. So I am going to put in a cup I've never measured this before, so I'm just gonna go by what my tastes are and measure it as I go. So I'm gonna start by a cup of coffee, and this measuring cup is a half of a cup. All right, that seems about right, actually. Okay, next I'm gonna put in my sweetener. I like my coffee sweet, my iced coffee sweet. So I am putting in two um, sugar substitutes. You can either use one or two, but I, liked my, I, I like my iced coffee really, really sweet. 
So put that in. Then you can use um, some skinny syrup of your choice. Today I am going to be using, this is my new favorite, is the salted caramel mocha that I got. I think it was either from Winners or Marshalls here in Canada. Winners is like a TJ Maxx. So I'm gonna put a tablespoon of that in there. Then next we are gonna add some heavy whipping cream. I like using a combination of my heavy whipping cream and my unsweetened coconut milk. So we are gonna put some heavy whipping cream in and I think I'm gonna use two tablespoons of heavy whipping cream. Then what I use next is I use unsweetened silk coconut milk. Now. You can substitute for any low um, low carb milk that you're using. I am allergic to all nuts except for coconut. If that's a nut, I don't think so. But a lot of people say, are you allergic to coconut? And I am not. So that is what I'm using, but feel free to use the almond milk or the macadamia milk or whatever you are using low calorie. And I am going to put a half of a cup of my coconut milk. A full cup for mine is one carb. So my iced coffee um, usually works out to be, I give it one carb, but it's probably a half a carb because everything that we put in there does not have carbs. Um, but I always count one carb for my iced coffee. So let's, I'm gonna stir this up and I'm gonna give it a taste. Um, I think it needs a little bit more syrup. I'm gonna do another tablespoon of syrup. I think that's good. I think that's a keeper. So I will, I know, I'm sorry, I tried to like kind of like make my own recipe as I went along, but I will have my iced coffee recipe, I will have it written out down below in the description for anybody that wants to make my iced coffee. I am quickly just going to pack my lunch so you can see what I'm taking for lunch today. I am going to be taking two of those breakfast fat bombs that I had made in the previous video. Um, I will link that video here if you are interested. These are very good and they keep really, really well in the fridge, so I'm taking two of those. I picked up some of these Oh Snap um, dill pickles the other day when I was in town and they are so good. So I'm taking those for lunch as well for today. I'm taking a fork and I am also taking, which I had made yesterday, I am taking some egg loaf. So I made this yesterday and I recorded this for you yesterday. So I am going to share that egg loaf recipe with you now. I will show you in the next clip on how I make it because I knew I wouldn't have time to do it before work today and I did want to take it with me for lunch. So I guess you could say I kind of meal prepped it but I am going to include that clip in today's video. I will insert the recipe and the egg loaf that I made last night right now. To start out this recipe, you will need eight ounces of cream cheese, and we are gonna be mixing this up in our mixer. And you will also need eight tablespoons of butter. And then also we will need eight eggs. So we are just gonna put all of our ingredients into one mixing bowl. And I ended up using my big mixer, my KitchenAid, but you can also use a hand mixer as well too for this. So we and we are going to put that in our KitchenAid mixer. And then we are just going to put it on medium just for a couple minutes. It actually doesn't take too, too long in order for it to mix. This is a super easy recipe, only takes three main ingredients, and it's really good recipe to include in your meal prep as well too. I always use it as a breakfast is what I use it for, or my meal number one, but it's really, really good. So we are just going to add in some cinnamon, and I'm also going to add a splash of vanilla as well. Okay. 
And then we are going to mix that on medium speed. And then after all that is done mixing, we are gonna put it in a greased eight by eight pan. I used parchment paper and I just put some um, avocado spray on that. And you're gonna to wanna to preheat your oven to 350 degrees as well um, prior to starting this recipe. So I'm just gonna put the whole mixture in that eight by eight pan. And then we are going to put it in the 350 degree oven I put mine in for about 30 minutes, but just depending, it says 25 to 30 minutes in the recipe, but I liked mine a little bit overcooked. And voila, there it is, it is all done. So this recipe makes nine serving, and for each serving it is one gram of carb, so which is absolutely perfect. So for my meal that I'm taking today for lunch, I ended up taking three pieces, and on top I put some of this salted caramel um, seed butter. This is not peanut butter, it is just uh, made with sunflower seeds. So I put that on top of my egg loaf. You feel free to put whatever toppings you want on top of this. You can add more cinnamon as well too if you like. Maybe even some of my homemade whipped cream would probably taste really good as well. And I also added some of the sugar-free syrup that I had on hand. So I put that on top as well and that was a really, really good mixture. Still low in carbs but gave it some really, really good flavor. And I covered mine also too with powdered sugar, some swerve, and I got Jimmy to help me do that. So here is Jimmy's commentary. Yeah, come a little bit closer to the product. There you go. Just a second. Ooh, very nice. And here's my jam, putting the finishing touches on. Done. Voila. Tout fini. Thank you. And cut. Morning, Melissa. Hey, All right, everyone, it is, I showed you the time there, it is 10 to 12, and I'm going to have my first meal of the day, and you've seen what I packed for lunch, so that is what I'm going to be having. So I'm just gonna have my um, breakfast fat bombs, and then I'm going to have my egg loaf, which I'm going to warm up in the microwave, and I'm also going to have my pickles. So that is what I'm having for lunch. I will have on the screen the calories and the net carbs for my meal. All right, I am home from work. It is a little after 5.30 and I'm going to get started on supper and I'm just gonna keep it simple. I'm just gonna have some um, cheddar smokies and I'm gonna fry those up with some Brussels sprouts and I'm using Jimmy's recipe, he's the expert on the Brussels sprouts, so let's get started. All right, we are starting to make some Brussels sprouts and Jimmy usually makes these, so I would asked him how he makes his because they always turn out amazing. So these are frozen Brussels sprouts. So I am just gonna put them in a pot with some water and we are gonna boil them up first. And I'm just gonna show you the macros on these. They look like they're pretty pretty low in carbs so for two two thirds of a cup it is seven carbs and three fiber so pretty decent macros so we are going to boil those up first and then we are going to put them in a frying pan after they get semi soft right, well the brussels sprouts are boiling i am just going to fry up some bacon and I'm also just going to fry up the bacon till about halfway cooked, and then I'm gonna add a couple of Smokies chopped up. So let's start by putting in our bacon here and frying that up as well. So I just cut up the bacon a little bit there, and now I'm going to add two of the Smokies. I will show you the package in just a second. 
But I'm just gonna add these and keep it on low. And just kind of slowly let that fry up a little bit and until the Brussels sprouts get a little bit more done. So these are the sausages, the smokies that I am going to be using today. I used two of them. And the macros are one carb per smoky. So that is what I am going to be making tonight. I took two of those. All right, so the Brussels sprouts are semi soft. So I'm just going to drain them and then I'm going to cut these in half and then add them to our pan that has the cut up sausage. I'm gonna, then I'm gonna add them to the pan that has the cut up sausage and the bacon. to add my seasonings I'm going to add some black pepper some pink Himalayan salt some minced garlic And also some minced onion. Alright, that is going to be all the seasonings that I'm going to be using. So I'm just going to turn up the um, I'm gonna turn up the stove a little bit and get these frying up nice and good. Get all the flavors mixed together as well too. So I'm gonna fry it up probably for like five or seven minutes. All right, so this is all done and it all fried up really nicely. So this will probably make, I would say, two servings. So I am going to dish up my serving for supper tonight. This is going to be my supper. That is the serving of the Brussels sprouts and sausage that I'm having. And I'm also having that with a diet, um, diet orange crush as well. So I will have the macros for this meal on the screen, which will be the calories and the net carbs. All right, everyone, that is the end of the video. I will put the total macros on the screen, which will be the total amount of calories and the total net carbs for the day. Um, that Brussels sprout and sausage was so good. I'm glad I have leftovers because I do work a full day tomorrow. So that is what I'm going to be taking for lunch today. So I hope you enjoyed another um, three ingredient meals. Both of the meals that I had today were both just three ingredients or less. So really, really easy for you guys to put together. And you guys probably have all the ingredients at home already to make both of these, I would think. Um, Brussels sprouts are keto. They are on the keto approved list. So that is it for the video. Make sure that you hit the red subscribe button. Give this video a like to let me know that you're liking my content. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so YouTube can inform you when you upload a new video. Thanks for watching.